Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about find the domain of a composite function. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help to use Minute Math. So what is the domain of a composite function? Well, we have a de uh, definition here. The domain of a composite function, f of g of x, is the set of those inputs x in the domain of g for which g of x is in the domain of f. All right. It's almost like, if you've seen the movie Inception, it's like inside of each other or like those Russian dolls, right? The domain of one has to be in the domain of the other, and it's combining them all together. So let's first, let's just dive into an example here, and we can, we can see what it's all about. So we want to find the domain of our composite function f of g of x, where f of x is equal to 5 over x minus 1, and g of x is equal to 4 over 3x minus 2. All right, so we're going to find that domain. So what we want to do is really kind of look at here and see the domain of each one. What's the domain of g of x first? Okay, so g of x here, let's take g of x. All right, because that, remember, f of g of x is f of g of x, if you want to see it that way. All right, they're the same there. So g of x, we know, is that 4 over 3x minus 2. Okay, well, the input value of f of x, what's the input value that we can't have? Okay, the input value of x minus 1, or sorry, of f of x that we can't have is just 1. So we know uh, that f of x cannot equal 1 because we can't have a 0 in the denominator. So why don't we, what we're going to do is take our g of x and say, okay, its output is going to go into f of x here. We need to find when that equals 1. So, in doing so, we multiply both sides by 3x minus 2, and we have 4 equals 3x minus 2. All right, then we add a 2 to both sides, 6 equals 3x, divides both sides by 3, and 2 is equal to x, or x equals 2. So, what they're telling us here, what they're telling us here is that x cannot equal 2 right there, okay? x cannot equal 2, because 2 causes an error in the f of x function, okay? But what about g of x? What other value can we not plug in for g of x, okay? Well, g of x has a, uh, the denominator, right? We take the 3x minus 2, and we're going to set that equal to 0 because we can't have a denominator that equals 0 there. So this is for g of x. So we add 2 to both sides, 3x equals 2, and x equals 2 thirds, meaning that for g of x, right here, x cannot equal 2 thirds, then the input value that causes this x to be 1, right, is the output of g of x, we had to find what that was, and that was not equal to 2, okay? Be careful, a lot of people will first look at it and say, oh, this value f of x can't be 1, so therefore uh, 1 is not also in our domain. But remember, our first x value got plugged into g of x here. So one's totally fine, it works. The only two values don't work are two thirds for g of x, and then two that goes into g of x, which gives an output of one and for f of x. So our two values that x cannot be are two thirds and two. And so we can see, write the domain here in this interval notation of negative infinity over two thirds, union two thirds to two, Union, if I can fit it in here, 2 to infinity. Oh, I ran out of room. All right, so that's our domain. I kind of got too big there and got ahead of myself. But as our domain there, it can equal all those values for f of g of x, but it can't equal 2 and 2 thirds. All right, so let me go erase this so we can get another example for you. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, find the domain here of a radical function. We're given f of g of x, and we're going to find that's domain. 
It also can be written like this. We know f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 2, and g of x is equal to the square root of 3 minus x here. So what is f of g of x? Well, if we plug that all in, right, we have the big square root here, and then we have plus 2 in there. Then g of x goes in for this x, which is another square root of 3 minus x. All right. So what do we notice? Well, we know this first square root has to be positive, or it can't be negative, better way to put it. So it can be 0 or negative, okay, inside this uh, 0 or positive in this first part here. So what's the domain of that first part? Well, we know the square root of 3 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Well, square both sides, it really doesn't matter, 3 minus x is greater than or equal to 0 here. Subtract 3 to both sides, minus x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Divide both sides by a negative 1, and x is less than or equal to a positive 3. Remember, dividing over inequality uh, by a negative number flips the inequality. So x has to be less than or equal to 3. Okay, But notice this part now. The other thing we have to worry about is the whole radical here, the whole radical, the big part. Well, that whole big part has to be greater than or equal to 0, what's inside of it, right? We can't take the square root of a negative number. But if we know that everything from this restricted domain right here, we kind of found, everything there is going to be either 0 or a positive number when it's all said and done. We add a 2 to that, it's always just going to be positive. So our only restricted domain here is what we first found, that x can be from negative infinity to positive 3, including 3, and that will work there. And that is our domain of this whole composite function. Again, that makes this whole thing right here become positive and a positive or zero. And a positive or zero plus a positive number will always be positive and we're good. And so our final domain is just negative infinity to three and including three. Okay? Well, I hope you learned something about how to find the domain of a composite function. If you did, Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. So, as always, thanks for watching. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. MinuteMathTutor.com